T-minus 21 seconds in the solid uh, rocket booster engine gimbal now underway. Four, three, two, one, and liftoff. Liftoff of the 25th Space Shuttle mission, and it has cleared the tower. Space Shuttle Challenger. Liftoff from a freezing cold Florida to the cheers of the young students of the first ever U.S. teacher astronaut. Engines beginning throttling down now at 94 percent. Normal throttles uh, for most of the flight, 104 percent. Velocity, 2,257 feet per second. Altitude, 4.3 nautical miles. Downrange distance, 3 nautical miles. Moments later, full throttle and point of highest stress. A massive explosion. The cheering stops. The horror sinks in. On the morning of January 28, 1986, millions of Americans tuned in to watch history. But just 73 seconds after liftoff, the Challenger space shuttle broke apart in the sky, live on national television. It was a moment that stunned the world and left a nation asking, how could this happen? These people, here in Mission Control, were responsible for guiding NASA's 1,800-pound unmanned Voyager 1 spacecraft some billion miles through space. NASA's shuttle program was meant to revolutionize spaceflight, reusable spacecraft, fast turnaround times, and routine missions. Challenger had already flown nine successful flights. By 1986, it felt familiar safe. But this mission was different. Among the crew was Krista McAuliffe, a high school social studies teacher from Concord, New Hampshire, selected from thousands. The public fell in love with her voice, her story, and her mission to bring space into classrooms. The idea was to humanize space, to inspire a new generation of students, not just to watch space flight, but to feel like they were part of it. Krista had a quiet, steady presence. She wasn't flashy. She was grounded. But she believed in something powerful, that education could change the world. Gorgeous. You just want to bring it all back into the classroom for the kids. The morning of launch was bitterly cold, 36 degrees Fahrenheit. Engineers had warned about the temperature. Despite the concerns, the countdown continued. The crew suited up for what they believed would be a routine mission. There were smiles and jokes. They had done this before, some of them, many times. At 9.30 a.m., the crew made their walk across the gantry to the shuttle as the cameras rolled. In mission control, there was calm focus. Outside, the bleachers were full of children, reporters, and teachers, there to see Krista fly. By 11.30 a.m., Everything was in place. Seven astronauts strapped in, awaiting the signal. At 11.38 a.m., Challenger lifted off. No other way to explain it, simply awesome. The, the feeling, the whole grandstand, three and a half miles away from here, just shakes. Amazing. 73 seconds after liftoff, a puff of smoke appeared near the right booster. Control program confirmed. Then, Disintegration. A fireball in the sky. A smoke trail. Confusion. Millions watched. No one fully understood what they were seeing. Oh, there she goes, there it goes. Right over those trees. Oh, yeah. I saw it. When it went through that hole. The I don't remember it being that, that bright and that big. Oh, look, there's two. It's going off into two. Hey, is that trouble or not? They're not having trouble, are they? That's trouble of some kind, George. That's trouble of some kind, isn't it, or not? News anchors struggled for words. Families at the Cape were frozen in place in complete shock. 
that evening, President Reagan addressed the nation. Today is a day for mourning and remembering. Nancy and I are pained to the core by the tragedy of the shuttle Challenger. This is truly a national loss. We mourn seven heroes. The families of the seven, we cannot bear as you do the full impact of this tragedy. But we feel the loss and we're thinking about you so very much. We've grown used to the idea of space and perhaps we forget that we've only just begun. We're still pioneers. They, the members of the Challenger crew, were pioneers. In the disaster's aftermath, President Reagan formed the Rogers Commission. Their mission? Find out how and why Challenger failed. The investigation found the cause was shockingly simple. A rubber O-ring failed in one of the rocket boosters. In cold weather, the O-ring lost flexibility. It couldn't seal a joint. Hot gases escaped and tore Challenger apart. Engineers from Morton Thiokol had warned NASA. They knew the O-rings weren't reliable below 53 degrees, but they were overruled. At 0.678 seconds into the flight, a strong puff of gray smoke can be seen spurting from the vicinity of the aft field joint on the right solid rocket booster. The vaporized material streaming from the joint indicates there was not complete sealing action within the joint. Among the members of the Rogers Commission, Nobel Prize winning physicist Richard Feynman. Feynman wasn't interested in spin. He wanted answers. In a moment broadcast on national TV, he dropped a sample O-ring into ice water. It stiffened almost instantly. His message was clear. NASA launched with known design flaws, and they ignored the consequences. Feynman's words became part of the final report, Appendix F, and he almost refused to sign it unless they were included. It was uh, an accident that had many, many warnings that there was something wrong and that it might sooner or later go off, and uh, the warnings were disregarded. The Nobel Prize-winning physicist wrote a section of the final report known as Chapter F. Commission sources say Chairman William Rogers read the chapter and was furious. He called Feynman to Washington Wednesday and urged him to tone down his criticism of NASA because Chapter F threatened to destroy public confidence in the space agency. Feynman returned to his home in California and began his rewrite, but then changed his mind. Sources close to the scientists say he felt his ethics were being compromised. NASA didn't just suffer a mechanical failure, it suffered a cultural one. The Challenger crew were more than astronauts. Commander Francis Scobie, pilot Michael Smith, Judith Resnick, Ronald McNair, Ellison Onizuka, Gregory Jarvis, and Krista McAuliffe. Each had a dream. Each left behind a legacy. Shuttle flights were suspended for nearly three years after the Challenger accident. Booster joints were completely redesigned. Safety procedures were overhauled. In 1988, Discovery launched. The shuttle program returned to space, forever changed. The Challenger disaster changed the way NASA worked. It changed how America viewed spaceflight and failure. Though her lessons were never broadcast from space, Krista McAuliffe's message continues to echo in classrooms across the country, through the generations she set out to inspire. History doesn't always move forward in triumph. Sometimes it moves through heartbreak and what we choose to learn from it. We remember the Challenger 7 not for the tragedy that took them, but for the courage curiosity, and spirit they carried into the sky. Good afternoon, everyone, from downtown Carkin, New Hampshire, home of America's first teacher in space. People put it clear with the thumbs, thumbs up. up. There yep. it is. She is getting a nice round of applause from a big crowd here. It is a great honor for Krista, and at the same time, inseparably, it is a great and deserving honor for the teachers and educators across this country.
I hope teachers everywhere will come and see it. I hope they will take pride in their noble work. I hope students will come and see it, and I hope they will be inspired to pursue their dreams as far as their talent and effort will allow. You know, she was just a teacher, and, and then she went on to do these amazing things, and the lessons that she had intended to teach from space are now all accessible online. And so, in some way, she's still teaching. I mean, there's two and a half million teachers in the United States. When you think of the daily contact, I mean, the, the impact that we have um, across, across the board, if you get teachers excited about something, is just phenomenal.